Hey, welcome back to Monday Morning Mojo. We are just going to jump right in. And I think I'm going to start with a question. How is your sense of direction? Now, I'm not really asking you about your ability to navigate in the car. What I'm asking is if you really have an idea of where you want to be in life or in your career, and before you decide to go to another podcast episode, because you're just not ready to face this question today, just hold on and stay with me. I promise this will be a great, great talk. So I think that it's important to understand that everyone wants to grow. We're programmed to grow. As human beings, we are here to constantly grow and evolve, which is so exciting. And if you want to grow, it's important to accept the fact that you need to understand yourself first. And what I mean by that is you just need to understand who you really are at your core. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are some of your fears? What are some of your greatest skills and gifts? And I think that when you can gauge all of that and understand who you are, you start to understand more about where you are in life. And when you understand where you are in life, then you get to really create some clarity around where you want to be. And so it's important that we raise our awareness to know exactly what is happening at this moment if we want to be able to choreograph and design what our future looks like. So to reach your full potential, you just have to know where you want to go. I also think it's important to know what fulfills us, what brings us joy, what makes us happy, because when we connect with our passion, that's what really helps us define our purpose. So asking ourselves questions around that reveals so much and helps us get clear about the path that we need to set on. You have to know who you are to grow to your potential, but you have to grow in order to know who you are. What's the solution? Exploration, just being willing to explore more about yourself and about your growth. And I think the way to start doing that is just pay more attention to your passions, pay more attention to the things that come easy to you, pay more attention to the things that people compliment you on or give you some recognition for, because all of those things are clearly in your strength zone and that can lead you to understanding more about your potential. And I believe all of that awareness can also lead to acceptance because you have to like who you are in order to feel the motivation to want to grow and improve parts of who you are. So it starts with acknowledging and accepting where you are and who you are at this very moment so that you can grow into a fuller extension or version of yourself. So I want to give you a few questions that you can ask yourself that will help you start to work on this process, the process of understanding who you are, accepting who you are in order to create a plan for growth. Okay. So the first question is really a question around what is happening in your life at this moment. And it's simple. It's just to ask yourself, do I like what I'm doing? Do I like what I'm doing in terms of my career? Do I like what I'm doing in terms of my interests and hobbies? Am I fulfilled with the things that I'm attending and participating in? What am I missing in my life? What do I need less of in my life? What about the people in my life? I think we would probably be amazed at how many people struggle with a question like this. And so that's why it's so important to ask yourself. And if you find yourself really not happy in your job or your career choice, what changes can you make? Are there changes you have to make in your own mindset and in your own approach? Or are there changes that you need to make in terms of aligning with a different industry, a different company, a different role? We all have choices and it may not be an easy choice, but it could be simple in the sense that it puts you further along in a journey of really living a life by design. And the second question I would ask myself then after number one is, what would you like to do? If there is a 
direct connection between finding your passion and reaching your potential, then we have to ask ourselves if what we're doing is something we're passionate about. Because if it's not, we're not really going to live up to our full potential. So if those questions reveal some things to you that help you to see that you might not be able to fulfill your destiny, then what choices again can you make? Because passion will always give you energy. Passion will always inspire you to want to do more and attract more of that in your life. And so if that's missing, that could be why it might feel like you're struggling or hitting that brick wall. Okay, so now here's question number three. Can you do what it is that you say you want to do? For instance, if I feel excited and spend some time creating vision around being an actress on Broadway, yet I don't have that skill set, I don't have that credibility or access to uh, anything that will help me develop that potential, then there's going to be a gap. And so we have to understand if there is a gap, do we know the difference of what we want and what we're good at? Because when we do things that we're good at, we're going to naturally be in our strength zone. And so I think to be successful at a high level, we have to acknowledge that we have to find what we're really good at. And we have to be willing to create some mastery in that area. We also have to acknowledge what drives us, what motivates us. Do we get excited about the idea? Will it be something that we can develop commitment to rather than just being interested in it? It might be fun to daydream about being the Broadway performer, yet if I'm not willing to put in the time to do what it takes, or if it's just not really in my wheelhouse, then I have to get honest with myself about that. And of course, I also will say, and I do a lot of this work with clients and coaching, and, and we can share the resource again for this. We'll put a link in the show notes. I have an exercise you can do to figure out your values. And this is so important, guys, because... Your values really are the beliefs that you hold on to, which become the rules you live by. And if you're not clear about your values, it will be easy to find yourself living outside of those values. And when we live outside of our values, that's where we find stress. We find friction and we find a lot of discontentment. And so I think another important part of this awareness around who we are and what we want also has to be connected back to our values so that we know that we're in alignment and that we're looking at connecting with and attracting the things that align with what are, is important to us through our values. One of the main keys to being successful and fulfilling your purpose is to just truly understand your unique talents and find the right arena to use them. Find the right places to show and use these talents. So back to understanding our sense of direction, we can't change direction either if we don't know where we're going, if we don't have a desired destination. So these questions that I'm sharing with you will do a lot to raise your awareness and develop your conscious thoughts around the things that you want. And I think that you cannot change direction if you aren't aware that you're not headed in the right direction either. So it's about moving out of autopilot and into the driver's seat and these questions will help you figure it out. And then as you're figuring it out and you're developing your awareness and you're coming up with answers to these questions, then it's time to do something with that. It's time to put it into action because nothing changes if nothing changes. And so we have to understand that by doing, we create new outcomes and you can't win if you don't begin. So in taking those action steps, then other things start to take shape. What are the goals and how much do you want to accomplish by when and who will hold you accountable and what do you need to learn or implement in order to take it to the next level? Those are all things that you will start to formulate a plan around, but it has to start with the awareness. And as you become aware of the steps that you have to take and you start to take action and become more accountable and start following through, 
you're going to start to see a change in the way you behave. You're going to start to see a change in the way that you think. And that is going to create a change in what you attract. And that is transformation. And that transformation is exciting because it leads to so many possibilities because who you are is who you attract. So as you evolve, so will the connections you make, the networking, so will the people around you in your inner circle. And if you want to be around growing people, then you have to be willing to find them. And if you surround yourself with people who think about growth, who think about opportunity, who are working to develop themselves both personally and professionally, that is going to have an, a positive impact on you as well. So once you start to figure out what you want to do, start finding the people who are doing it. Start finding the people who are doing it at a high level with great results and a degree of excellence. Then do what you have to learn from them. Get in their space, get into conversations, get committed. If you have to maybe even pay someone for their time or advice and treat them as a consultant and be consistent about it. You can set up a time to meet with someone every month and they can become your mentor. And I think it's also about being creative because you can learn a lot from people who have achieved the same things you want to accomplish. You can learn from them and maybe never meet them. You could learn from reading their book or listening to their podcast or wherever you can connect with them on social media. So just get creative, but find a way to get the knowledge, get the tools and get the support from people who have already been there and who have accomplished it. And I think that makes the journey for growth may be easier and you're capable of getting there faster. I think coaching, mentoring, consulting, modeling, right? So when you have the opportunity to be mentored by someone, that's powerful because they're going to impart knowledge. They're going to share their experiences with you. They're going to encourage you. And that can do so much to help you on your journey. And if you're going to ask someone to take you on as a mentee or get into that mentoring type relationship, just remember that you have a few responsibilities in that relationship too. You have to know that you're teachable. You have to be willing to come into that meeting or conversation open-minded and prepared. And just be mindful of the fact that they're taking time to, to share their tools, knowledge, support, and information with you. And when I mean come in prepared, come in ready to do some work, come in ready to have conversations, but come ready with some questions. Think ahead of time about what you want to know from this person and come in with some questions. Then be accountable to what you're learning. In other words, implement whatever you can. Share your experiences with your mentor. Share your results with your mentor. And I think that mentorship is really something that I would love to see happen more often. And as someone who has mentored a lot of people, I can tell you that I also, as a mentor, think about my responsibility to the other person. And my responsibility is to add value to them. My responsibility is to help them get clarity. And I think that my goal is always to help them hit their goal faster than if they were to do it on their own. And so I usually will focus on getting to know them and what their goals are. I want to know their strengths and weaknesses. I want to understand from them the things that keep them up at night. I want to help them in the areas where I have some mastery. And I want to share whatever knowledge, but I also want to be honest and vulnerable enough to share my challenges too, because I think people really appreciate that depth of honesty and vulnerability. And so that's an important part of being a mentor and what I try to really give to anyone that I'm mentoring. 
And lastly, I want to share that you have to create some vision too. You have to be able to sit and think about what will life look like when I start making some of these changes or I become more aware? How will my life really start to unfold? And I think that when we think about what it will be like when we get to do what we like to do, that should really excite us. And I think when you do what you've always wanted to, it could probably even be better than imagined. And so life is short. This is the one life you get. So why take any more time to figure it out? Like now is the time. This saying that I've heard so many times is a great way to end this podcast. People say there are two great days in a person's life. The day you were born and the day you discover why. So my friends, I want to encourage you to figure out why you're here because we all have a purpose. And I think that when we figure out what we were put on this earth to do or create, or support or impact and we pursue it with all our heart we will really live an amazing life so what we've been talking about today is understanding a little bit about our sense of direction and really creating more awareness in our life so i want to leave you with a couple of journal prompts we'll make sure they're in the show notes for you too so if you're driving don't worry about it you can come back and look at it later but here are a couple of questions to really consider, and, and I would encourage you to sit and write some thoughts out. The first one, and, and some of it we've already covered, is what would you like to do? What would you like to do? Number two is what talents, skills, and opportunities do you possess that support your desire to do it? Number three, what are your motives for wanting to do it? And then number four, what steps must you take beginning right now, beginning today to start doing what you want to do? Is it more around the awareness piece? Is it much more about taking action? Do you need to find an accountability partner like a coach or a mentor? Where do you need to start implementing and start doing what you want to do? Which one of those areas? I trust you got something that you needed to hear out of today's episode. And I know we talked about a lot of things and potential was one of them. And potential is probably one of the most wonderful words in any language because potential is endless and it's unique for each one of us. And I think that it is about discovering what makes us feel fulfilled, discovering what makes us feel joyful, because getting to the end of our life with any unfulfilled potential is not the goal. We don't want to have any regrets and we don't want to die with the music still inside of us. We want to be able to reach our potential so that we can grow and we want to be intentional about it. So, Go out there and start figuring it out. I'll talk with you soon.